So I'd like to talk about um, something that's not breaking news, uh, glossary with semantic media wiki that's uh, not hot, I would say, but um, from our customer's perspective, glossary is definitely one of the most wanted things. Uh, when they uh, start uh, a wiki or management system based on, on, on the wikis, it's always the glossaries. And uh, especially in the light of, uh, of AI, uh, if you had the chance to listen to the talks yesterday, glossaries become uh, interesting. Why is this the case? So definition of, of a glossary. So it's a curated list of terms. So this means that someone or uh, groups of people really take their time to make a well-prepared definition of what a term means. So um, this is power food for AI, so to say. If, if you have uh, the situation where you have very lean text or, or only little text in, in management systems, for example, a glossary is very helpful because it has really some fat on the bones, so uh, it's perfect to feed AI with that. And uh, of course, it serves as a reference guide to, to help users navigate and comprehend specialized terminology. So this is really um, one of the use cases of a wiki, I would say. <clears throat> so, what does a glossary typically look uh, like? So it's a definition of a term uh, and some text that describes what it is. And um, I choose the the uh, the name of this um, presentation today um, because we have some challenges with with glossaries. If you have uh, multiple, let's go back maybe one. <coughs> if we have glossary terms uh, that are equal, but from different sources, like you have the glossary uh, term risk, and you have the term risk that comes from uh, uh, an uh, international standard um, about risk management, or you have uh, another source, um, legal source, whatever, that also defines risk. So how do you deal with that? And that's a, a use case we have very often at um, our customer side that we have the same terms. So what, one step after the other. So why are glossaries important? Uh, they enhance clarity, of course. <clears throat> they uh, facilitate uh, the learning. So um, again, that's a perfect use case for a wiki if you're onboarding new users and you bring them to the wiki, just have a look at the wiki. We have our standard operating procedures there. It's a perfect learning material and you have a consistent terminology. So if we are in consulting uh, projects at customers, it's really interesting and I, I enjoy uh, um, coming new to a project and you talk to different people. And uh, as an external, you uh, recognize very often that uh, people don't use the same terms. They're working in the same company but they use different terms, but meaning the same. Or the opposite, they use the same terms, meaning something completely different. So, I would like to show you um, a use case from our wikis, and here are some ingredients. Of course, we use uh, SMW, we use page forms, we use a semantic glossary uh, extension, uh, and the other two, we use um, the ID provider that's used uh, to create uh, in our case, uh, UUIDs. I will show you later what that means. And we use display title. So that's uh, the secret source. And now let's have a look at <coughs> how this looks like in, in the wiki. Where am I? So, so that's a typical uh, management system. It looks like this, so we have different things here, we have organization definitions, people roles, teams, we have meetings and stuff, we have locations and things, a lot of other pieces like requirements, issues, project management, and, so on. and we have glossary. And that's the page about the glossary. On the left hand side we have um, the semantic drill down. We have all the glossary terms in the wiki with synonyms and their definitions. So that's uh, the, the overall catalog. 
And you already see here, um, there are different sources, like uh, Allergen is uh, coming from EFS logistics uh, standard, while, sorry for the German, it's uh, our demo data. So Anforderung, this comes from the ISO 45000. So you have different sources. And if we go to, let me just sort by alphabetically. Like here's one case. The term audit is defined uh, in two different sources with two different definitions. They might be similar, but the official definition that that's relevant in the management system needs to be uh, tracked. So you need to follow the context, so to say. And um, we want to have both. And this depends what kind of uh, standards you uh, need to load to your wiki. So the EFS logistics might only be relevant for the logistics uh, industry while the ISO 45000 is uh, for different, some might have both. Others might have even three or four times uh, definition for audit. So what's the issue with that? I mean, the glossary term is also a wiki page. And here you see already, we do not have the glossary term like uh, in namespace glossary and then audit, but we have the term itself on a page with a UUID. So we don't use um, human readable uh, URLs anymore. In this case, we use uh, UUIDs. Uh, to have the ability to load two separate pages with the same term definition. And that only works if you have something that creates the IDs for you. And you have something that creates, uh, again, the human readable name for you, and that's display title. So if you look at this page, audit, for example, you see you have the UUID, but it still says it's audit. I mean, that's display title magic. And display title takes care that if you reference this page somewhere in the wiki, everywhere where it's linked, it says audit. So that's, uh, that comes from display title. Um, Example, for, um, so that's the effect of semantic glossary, by the way. It looks up the terms here. Oh, it's hard to read here. And if it finds, I mean, it's, it's more or less similar with JavaScript, uh, checking the page and where it finds the terminology, it pops up with the definition. And here you see already audit has been defined twice. And it shows you both definitions here in the pop-up. And that works um, seamlessly, um, even if you use UUIDs and these kind of things. So how is this implemented technically? So I need to get rid of the bar here. First, if you take a look at uh, <clears throat> the form definition for a glossary term, let me scroll in a little bit. That's the piece we need. So the name is just created uh, by this parser function that comes from the ID provider uh, extension. So whenever I create a new page uh, for a glossary term, I get a unique identifier and that's persistent. Um, so if we, for example, have the glossary for the ISO 45000, we store this and we can load the whole definitions of glossary terms to our customer wikis but the UUIDs, they stay, they stay uh, the same. So whenever we have some updates, for example, things matches again without changing the titles, <coughs> which by the way happens sometimes that uh, definitions changes. Um, so with the UUID, you're uh, safe, like you can change the title without changing uh, the identifier. So that's the one piece. <clears throat> and the second piece is how do we how do we annotate such a page? So going back to the audit here, if we take a look at the properties, you see there are some technical properties uh, that are required by um, uh, semantic glossary. One is here, uh, the, the glossary definition. And you see already, I injected a little bit of um, HTML. That was the pop-up showing uh, where the uh, the source is coming from. To make this better readable, you can inject uh, a bit, little bit of HTML 
Of course, this looks messy if you want to reuse this property somewhere else, but that's just for the pop-up. You have the glossary link, that's again with the UUID. Uh, you see that we have the glossary term. You see that we uh, lowercase it, and that's sometimes uh, relevant um, depending on uh, which variations could uh, exist in a text. Um, and we have, what else do we have? Nothing that's relevant for, for the moment. And the template looks like, up, looks like this. And this has a section. And here, the annotations are done. <laughs> That's this part. Let's zoom in a little bit. <clears throat> so that's the important thing. We set a display title separately. So that's uh, just a legacy part in our wiki. So then you have a short description. We set the glossary definition. That's what comes into the pop-up. Uh, so we remove namespaces, for example, at the glossary definition here. You have to uh, make the first piece bold uh, syntax here. We have the glossary abbreviation here. We map uh, synonyms and so on. So that all comes all from, uh, from a semantic glossary. So you see there's not much changes, but just uh, using the UEIDs together with display title makes this really working very well for overlapping terms. So um, super simple um, at the end of the day um, and works very well in these uh, complex setups. So this was just a, a short talk, more like, like a lightning talk. Um, if you have any questions regarding this process or if you have experience also with these kind of glossaries, with overlapping terms, I'm, I'm happy to discuss with you. Ah, forget one thing. If someone's listening from uh, the foundation, from the core developers, one issue with having UUIDs, ha, huh, that's an important one. If I look for audit here, <laughs> you see some things, but you see not our glossary terms. The reason is because uh, the search suggest is not aware of display title. And there was a pull request some years ago, and that died uh, after hanging two years within uh, the fabricator task, and then it was too old to be merged. So someone was lost here uh, doing a commit, and that's a little bit unfortunate. That's really a missing piece. That's my biggest wish list for Christmas next year, to, to have this fixed. Uh, we hadn't the time yet to do it on our own, so let's see. Maybe we fix it ourselves if no one else is doing it. Where is Cindy when you need her? Yeah, I look at her. <laughs> oh, there she is. Oh, no, I thought. Uh, by the way, a display title is one of the things Cindy created, so yeah. that's one of the very important pieces here. So, okay. so uh, questions? But I, I have a question myself. Uh, I don't see any uh, raised hands. You were talking about uh, glossary and AI mm -hmm. at first. Can you explain a little bit uh, about that <coughs> combination? Yeah, I mean, yesterday we had the situation on a, on a page here. Let's just go back. Let's say in the, in the area of, I think I showed something with processes. <coughs> Let me try to find one. And. Oh, this looks. Okay, a page like this. So there's a lot of diagramming stuff. There's a lot of metadata here, but you see not very much free text. So it's really lean, I would say. And if you want to feed such a page in, in, into your AI, and uh, the AI expects some natural language. Um, it's difficult to understand. Of course, you can feed it with the triples with, if you have a separate loader. But if you just load, let's say, the HTML part of the page, it's, it's difficult. And the more you have uh, explanations, like here, organization, for example, is a glossary term. You can feed additional information and context uh, into what yeah. you feed into the AI. So that's what I meant, that these are very rich and curated uh, snippets of text. So it's yeah. uh, really, a lot of people looked at it. It's not auto-generated, uh, at least not now uh, these days, but this is really a substantial text. Yeah, so I understand what you mean. So you <coughs> grab the, 
the the terms yeah. before you feed to AI. Yeah. yeah. Okay, Bernard. Yeah. Uh, what is the fuss about the UU IDs? Because uh, I mean, MediaWiki, I understand the concept of of having unique IDs. But uh, if you have this URL and you would just use the, the, the page ID, you would have a perfectly unique ID, not a UU ID. Mm -hmm. So why do you need that? Well, uh, sometimes we, we uh, generate these kind of sources from external sources. So if, if your wiki is uh, the uh, authority for your IDs, you're fine. <clears throat> but sometimes we feed that kind of stuff from external sources. And the UUID mechanism is some kind of a standard, so you can generate UUIDs also on external systems and then feed it to the wiki. So <clears throat> that's uh, the major reason, not to have the wiki being the ID authority. Okay, one more question. No questions anymore. So Robert. Yes. Oh, I have a question. Oh, how many terms does your glossary have? D depends what, I, I mean, it's not our glossary. We have glossaries for the various standards. So if you have uh, an ISO standard or the uh, a good distribution practice from, that's, that's an EU standard. So depends on how much they put in. So it, it's not limited, it's just wiki pages. Yeah, I'm, I'm asking because we have worked with a semantic glossary in the past. I think we still do, but. Uh, we noticed then that when you have a glossary with, say, 500 or maybe even 1,000 terms, that your page loads um, get so very slow, up to 30, 40, 50 seconds, mm -hmm. because of semantic glossary. So I was just curious whether that's fixed now or whether you, you experience the, the same problems. You mean the, the JavaScript part yeah. that is loaded up here? But at least I'm not aware that you have any issues regarding performance on that side. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Alexander, for your talk.